Despite years of attention to diversity, equity, and inclusion, America's healthcare system has failed to make measurable progress in identifying, addressing, and eliminating disparities in health and health care. Addressing health care disparities will require teams of creative and committed individuals who are diverse with respect to race, ethnicity, gender, profession, disciplines, and other vectors of difference. In order to achieve our ultimate goal of advancing health worldwide, we need to build teams that include people from different backgrounds and with diverse life experiences so we can solve complex problems together. UCSF's success in improving the health of our patients and our communities depends on diversifying our disciplines and creating an inclusive and equitable workplace. As October is Diversity Month, I would like to take this opportunity to highlight six areas in which the School of Medicine is advancing diversity, equity, and inclusion. First is Differences Matter, a multi-year, multifaceted School of Medicine initiative designed to make UCSF the most diverse, equitable, and inclusive academic medical system in the country. It is comprised of the six focus areas leadership, climate and recruitment, education, clinical care, research, and outreach pipeline and pathways programs. Second, we provide diversity, equity, and inclusion champion training to clinical teachers. This is designed to help them address bias and discrimination when and where it happens. As of September 2019, we have trained nearly 1,400 faculty educators with a goal of training at least 2,000 by the end of 2020. Third, we are making progress on the recruitment front. 40% of the UCSF School of Medicine class of 2022 self-identified as underrepresented in medicine, a 21% increase year over year, and the highest percentage in the School of Medicine's history. Through the efforts of the Office of Graduate Medical Education, the UCSF School of Medicine increased the percentage of UIM residents from 18% to 29% in two years. In fact, 13 of 19 clinical departments have a higher percentage of UIM, UIM residents than the ACGME average for each specialty. Fourth, in the clinical environment, Differences Matter implemented a Health Equity Council at UCSF Health and distributed equity toolkits designed to ensure consistent quality of patient care across departments. We've also piloted a program of one interpreted conversation per day with English limited proficiency patients. Fifth, the School of Medicine instituted a policy that all committees appointed by the Dean's Office, departments, divisions, or ORUs, or other centers be comprised of 50% women or those underrepresented in medicine. This requirement applies to search committees, award and honors committees, endowed chair committees, and training program selection committees. Finally, the UCSF School of Medicine's Dean's Diversity Fund was established in 2015 to support the recruitment and retention of faculty who share the university's commitment to diversity and our belief that we have the responsibility to care for underserved and vulnerable populations. The awards provide faculty with three-year, $75,000 per year support to develop their academic interests. To date, we've funded 42 John A. Watson Scholars. In July 2018, the first cohort of Watson Scholars completed their funding period. The impact of their funding was evident in the sharp trajectory of these scholars' bright careers. This funding allows scholars time to pursue big grants, projects of interest, and make institutional impact. This outcome confirmed that providing support and mentorship to our junior faculty has a direct correlation to their success and retention at UCSF. We recently welcomed our 2019 class of John A. Watson faculty scholars. And I thought, instead of telling you about them, I would let them speak for themselves.
What I love about working in emergency medicine and being at UCSF is I have an opportunity every single day to work with a totally new group of people, and I just love that feeling. It's new patients who I haven't met before, get to meet them in a time of crisis and hopefully provide them excellent care and get a good outcome for them. I get to work with new residents and students and other faculty members and our nurses and techs and all the support staff. And it's just so fun to come to work every single day and not know what's coming. I love that feeling. So I think that medical humanities has gained a lot of traction in the last couple of years, particularly in undergraduate medical education. And I'm interested to see how I can figure out ways to embed that more in day-to-day -day practice, especially in primary care. My research is primarily focused on ways to estimate the size of hidden and hard to reach populations that are also often socially marginalized. While the focus of my research to date has been on populations that are at uh, elevated risk for HIV acquisition, I am also looking to expand the scope of my research to include other socially marginalized populations, such as people who are experiencing homelessness here in San Francisco, as well as people who have experienced human trafficking. In addition to wanting to be at this uh, mission-driven safety net hospital that is a part of UCSF and part of the San Francisco Department of Public Health was that I there were so many people when I was at UCSF who really cared about me and wanted to hear about my career and wanted to know what I wanted to do and how they could help me and that continued to do that even when I was at another institution and I, that that I think was that had a huge part to do with why I find myself here now. There are so many things that excite me about my job. Um, I'm an MD, PhD. Uh, I'm a physician scientist. And what excites me about the role that I'm taking on is it allows me to combine my clinical work with my research. Um, at that nexus, I think there's a real opportunity to really drive innovation in clinical care. Uh, and so the department's given me an opportunity to build out this immunopsychiatry program and then to integrate that with my basic science research to hopefully advance care for um, psychiatric patients. So one of the big projects I'm working on is how to combat the opioid crisis, specifically implementing new pathways and new ways of thinking about pain from both the patient perspective and the provider perspective. So thinking about the pain continuum for the patient from when they see their surgeon uh, in the preoperative clinic through their acute hospitalization and discharge and then transition back into the community um, so that we are not compounding the opioid crisis, yet we're still um, helping patients with appropriate pain expectations um, and knowing and thinking about what they're going to be facing during surgery. What excites me about my job is I get to do a lot of different and really interesting things. I get to study cognitive remediation interventions for substance use disorders. I get to examine how those interventions relate to neurobiology. And I also get to travel to rural areas in order to try and figure out how to better deliver medical services to underserved veterans. It's really the most ideal job that I could imagine. I love being an OBGYN. I feel incredibly privileged to participate in the lives of my patients and in some of the most intimate moments of their lives. I also love working with learners. I very much hold on to the identity as an educator and feel very fortunate to work with a with many inspired, committed, motivated learners. I find that our learners are very aspirational in what they hope to achieve in medicine, and they ask great questions, they challenge me, they push me to think deeply about the work that I do and the directions I wanna take, and I think they make the work that I do more interesting, more challenging, um, but also more fulfilling. It's an incredible honor to be named a John Watson Fellow and John Watson Scholar. I think um, what we see is that pioneers um, not only forge a path, but they keep that path open for people who follow them. And um, this opportunity would not have been available to me without John Watson's work. And that just makes me ever more aware of the responsibility I have 
to keep that path open for people who follow me? I definitely want to say that I could not be more grateful for this opportunity um, that the Watson Scholars provides us, not only for the financial support, but for the mentorship and sponsorship, um, for the opportunities to do things like this, and uh, for the whole group of scholars that has come before us. Having the Watson Scholarship provides me with protected time and support to focus on my research and to really develop my research agenda. The fact that this, this um, even exists is huge. I think it means that UCSF is committed to recruiting, retaining, and diversifying the faculty. And um, I am just, I feel really lucky to be part of, of, of this wonderful group of people, this community. There's a couple of years now of people who have received this award before me and who will continue to receive this award. And I think thinking of how we can support each other and um, also how we can uh, mentor others and, and the sponsorship that you receive through the program, I feel, feel really lucky. To me, it means that UCSF is investing in me, that they want me to stay, and that they want my, to see my career develop. I feel very proud. I feel very validated. I feel like it's the School of Medicine giving us something and telling us we want these things to happen. And it's an awesome opportunity to, to do what I want to do and get to work in diversity, equity, inclusion and build myself and help build our program and hopefully model some things on a kind of national level. So it's hugely important. And I feel so thankful that in my first year as faculty, I have this amazing grant that's going to help support a lot of the work that I want to do. I feel incredibly honored to be named a Watson Scholar. I had always dreamed of working at UCSF when I decided that I wanted to be a doctor. I think it's an institution that intentionally sort of invests in issues of justice and equity, and the Watson Faculty Scholar Program is this very significant and important investment in faculty of color. Being named a John A. Watson Scholar means to me that the institutions that I represent are not only interested and invested in my future, but they're invested in the future of the underserved veterans who we're trying to serve. My hope for the Watson is that we can show that diversity, equity, and inclusion are more than just talking points in a presentation. These are actual core values that we uphold at UCSF. and. We can show that when you invest actual time, energy, and funds into these principles, we can create a better work environment for everyone.